Just when you thought the 2020s couldn't get any more strange than they currently are, science brings us this. The skull of a specimen closely resembling humans and Neanderthals was discovered back in 1933. However, it is just now, almost 100 years later, making headlines as scientists have attempted to learn more about it. The skull was found in the Chinese city of Harbin. And as for Professor Chris Stinger, who was a part of the research team, I quote, in terms of fossils in the last million years, this is one of the most important yet discovered. Get ready to have your mind blown as we're about to talk about the Dragon Man. Today at LBQ, we're asking, did we find the skull of a new human? Smash that like button or else I'll cry and let's get into this one. I wanna cry, guys. Just let's press the button, please. I don't like being upset. You know, just do it for me. So first things first, let's talk about the story of the Dragon Man skull, because that in itself is pretty wild if you ask me. It's believed the skull itself is about 146,000 to 296,000 years old, and belonged to a man who was about 50 years old at the time of his passing. Back in 1933, a laborer who was working construction in the city of Harbin stumbled upon the artifact. At the time, China was occupied by Japan, and rather than handing over his findings to the authorities, the man decided to hide what he found in a well. As per the study which was posted in the innovation, I quote, instead of passing the cranium to his Japanese boss, he buried it in an abandoned well, a traditional Chinese method of concealing treasures. The treasure sat there for decades, a total of 85 years to be exact, which is when he would tell his family about it in 2018, right before his passing. The family would then retrieve it and donate it to the Geoscience Museum of Hebei GEO University. Researchers have decided to name the species Homo longi, but gave it the nickname Dragon Man, which is a tribute to where the fossil was originally found, an area known as Dragon River. The size of this actual thing was 23 centimeters long and 15 centimeters wide. Its skull had room for a very large brain, however researchers believe its brain was only about 7% larger than the average humans. The skull also has deep set eyes, a bulgy nose, and thick brow ridges, much like humans. That being said, his face was flat, had low cheekbones, and his mouth was rather wide, with no lower jaw. However, all indications led researchers to believe they lacked chins in the first place. Now to say this is a new human, well, it wouldn't be a stretch, as this is the closest fossil we've got that resembles humans today. Ji Jiang, a professor who led the study, explained, I quote, While it shows typical archaic human features, the Harbin cranium presents a mosaic combination of primitive and derived characters setting itself apart from the other previously named Homo species. Although some think this is a new species, others aren't so sure. The Dragon Man joins a number of extinct human fossils that have been found in China and are very hard to distinguish what or who exactly they belong to. Some have argued this new fossil of the Dragon Man belongs to the Homo sapiens, which would make him an early version of us. Others argue it's Neanderthal, while some are under the impression the fossil belongs to the Denosovans. The Denosovans were first identified after researchers were able to study DNA from a 30,000 to 50,000 year old finger bone found in Denisova Cave, Russia. Professor Marta Mirazan Lar from the University of Cambridge thinks the most recent findings belongs to the Denosovans. I quote, the Denisovans are this fascinating mystery population from the past. There is a suggestion from DNA evidence that the jawbone found in the Tibetan plateau might be Denisovan. And now because of the jawbone from the Tibet and Dragon Man look like each other, now we might actually have the first face of the Denisovan. Given that we've yet to fully complete a Denisovan skull, I guess technically completing one would mean we found a new human skull. So technically, I guess, yeah, we did, if that is what this is. However, the original research team believes they've stumbled upon a new species, separate from all the previously mentioned. Their research has led them to believe the Dragon Man species lived in forested areas within small communities. They're also under the impression they were able to adapt well to their environment and lived across most of Asia given where the original fossil was found. Chris Stringer of the Natural History Museum, who as I previously mentioned was a co-author on the study, told the media, I quote, this population would have been hunter-gatherers living off the land. From the winter temperatures in Harbin today, it looks like they were coping with even harsher colder than the Neanderthals. Now the really interesting thing about all this is the software they used which led them to believe the species is actually the closest thing to human beings we've yet to find much closer than Neanderthals. Comparing the measurements of their findings to that of 95 other skulls, the software created what is believed to be the most likely family tree, linking each skull to one another. Upon their findings, it was determined the Harbin skull, or Dragon Man skull, as well as a few other fossils recently found in China, formed a new lineage closer than that of Neanderthals to humans. But still, Stringer isn't necessarily as excited as his co-authors, as he thinks this finding is similar to that of another fossil which was found back in China in 1978. I quote, I prefer to call it Homo delianus, but it's not a big deal. The important thing is the third lineage of later humans that are separate from Neanderthals and separate from Homo sapiens. And speaking of the possibility if this thing is Denosovan, Stringer admits it's definitely possible, but won't say for sure. 
I quote, certainly the specimen could be Denisovan, but we have to be cautious. What we need is much more complete skeletal material of the Denisovans alongside DNA. Now, as you guys know, not everyone is necessarily as eager about science or wild theories and findings as I am. You know your boy, I get jacked up about science, baby. But Professor John Hawks from the University of Wisconsin, who is a paleoanthropologist and is much more qualified in this field than I am, doesn't think rushing to this new idea that we found a new species is a good idea. I quote, I think it's a bad moment in science to be naming new species among these large-brained humans that all interbred with each other. What we are repeatedly finding is that the differences in looks didn't mean much to these ancient people when it comes to breeding. Yet another professor, Mark Maslin, seemed much more excited. I quote, the beautifully preserved Chinese Harbin archaic human skull adds even more evidence that human evolution was not a simple evolutionary tree, but a dense intertwined bush. We now know that there are as many as 10 different species of hominins at the same time as our own species emerged. Maslow went on to explain that although it's clearly evident that different intelligent species lived among each other and likely interbred, these new fossils are proof of the ones which likely thrived the most. I quote, genetic analysis shows that these species interacted and interbred. Our own genetics contain the legacy of many of these ghost species. But what is a sobering thought is that despite all this diversity, a new version of Homo sapiens emerged from Africa about 60,000 years ago, which clearly outcompeted outbred and even outfought these other closely related species, causing their extinction. It is only painstaking searching and analysis of their fossils, such as the Harbin skull, do we know of their existence. All in all, it seems ultimately time will tell what exactly was found. It's just unclear how long that will take. Zhijian Ni, a professor at the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Hebei GEO University, and Xi Zhang was incredibly excited, telling BBC News, I quote, I said, oh my gosh, I could not believe that it was so well preserved. You could see all the details. It is a really amazing find. And still, he knows that not everyone is going to agree with what they believe. That's okay. I quote, The results will spark a lot of debate, and I am quite sure that a lot of people will disagree with us. But that is science, and it is because we disagree that science progresses. That's science, baby! Let's go! Now, as always, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What did we learn about the Pentagon UFO report? And Brad said they wrote a similar report almost exactly the same decades ago. That's like a common case of like, hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, sure, just don't make it too similar. They probably added like new terms. Instead of UFOs, they're calling them UAPs or whatever they're calling them. And they're just, you know, putting new dates, some new, ev new evidence, and now it's a brand new report, you know? Like, we wouldn't know. We always know these things. We know more than they do. That's, that's not true. They know way more than we do. <laughs> Sylvia Harris said, the government is like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. How will we ever truly know? When you really think of it like that though, it really is bad to think that's who's in charge of everything. And it's not even to think that they're not competent, they really are, they just withhold so much information, which sometimes, yeah, it's for the greater good, but other times it's not, like just tell us, we wanna know, where are the aliens at? Where are the aliens at, baby? Mike Silverthorne said, well, it's obviously not a foreign adversary because if you had tech like that, there's no need to spy, you've already won. US says it's not theirs. That's not the case though, just because they're spying doesn't necessarily mean that they've won. I mean, maybe they have better technology that we don't understand, but I mean, we got nukes, baby. America, nukes, yeah! I'm just saying, you know, one wrong move and bam, press that button and start blowing stuff up. That's how, that's the American way. Well, I wear my Canadian shirt. All right, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your boy Pepper. Stay spicy and we'll see you soon.